It's been two weeks since Elijah Vu was reported last seen in Two Rivers. Since then, support for his safe return has grown far beyond the lake shore. This is indeed a community response to a tough, tough set of circumstances. Tonight, what we know about the vehicle held in connection to the case. Good evening and thanks for joining us here at 9 tonight. Today marks the 15th day of searching for three-year-old Elijah Vu reported missing in Two Rivers. His disappearance has gained attention from across the state and across the country, really. Elijah was reported last seen by his adult caregiver on February 20th at 8 o'clock in the morning. That caregiver, Jesse Vang, along with Elijah's mother, Katrina Bauer, are both being held on child neglect charges. Law enforcement agencies and community Community members have been conducting searches for this little boy. It is a large operation with a lot of different moving parts. Yeah, and it's taking a toll emotionally, logistically, and financially on the local community. Fox 11's Andrew Mertens brings us the latest developments in the case. The search for three-year-old Elijah Vu entered its 15th day Tuesday, but authorities haven't stopped searching. On Tuesday, Two Rivers Police said they continued searching rural areas across Manitowoc County. Fox 11 observed a law enforcement presence at the Hope Community Church in Manitowoc. In an update to the community on Saturday, Two Rivers Police said they were using the church as a space for operations. While finding Elijah is the top priority, the search efforts come with a price tag. Two Rivers City Manager Greg Buckley says the annual police budget is about three $3.7 million. Included within the budget is a $150,000 overtime allowance. Buckley says an exact cost in the search for VU is currently unknown. Obviously the search and ongoing investigation are, are job one, but we're mindful of that and we're looking at options going forward because there will be expenses uh, significantly exceeding what is typical for us. The city says more than $5,000 has been raised through donations. This is indeed a community response to a tough, tough set of circumstances. Meanwhile, as authorities continue scouring Manitowoc County, police shared more information regarding a vehicle connected to the case. The vehicle seen here, a beige Nissan Altima, does not belong to Elijah's mother, Katrina Bauer, or his male caregiver, Jesse Vang. Police have possession of the vehicle and are not interested in the owner. Rather, they're asking residents and business owners to check surveillance cameras from Monday, February 19th, between 2 and 9 p.m. for footage of the vehicle. It has a Wisconsin license plate that begins with the letter A and ends with the number zero. In Manitowoc County, Andrew Mertens, Fox 11 News. Boo's family has been searching tirelessly for Elijah. Volunteers will resume searching tomorrow morning at 9.30. Those interested in helping are asked to meet at the Mikado Theater in Manitowoc. Now, police continue to remind the public that no tip or bit of information is too small. Anyone who may have seen Elijah or know where he is is urged to call the number on your screen. That is 844-267-6648. And looking ahead to Thursday, Vu's mother, Katrina Bauer, and his caregiver at the time of his disappearance, Jesse Vang, will be in court for their initial appearances. It has been two weeks now since um, Elijah was first reported missing. Obviously, on the city side, you know, not to take away from any of the search and stuff, but, you know, unfortunately, there is a dollar sign sure. on that. So I guess are you able to maybe get into, maybe you may not have exact figures, but is there anything you can tell us about, you know, how much the search is costing the city and what you guys are doing to, you know, try and keep that going? Well, clearly the, the search and investigation activity is presenting some extraordinary extraordinary uh, ex expenses and notably within our own department in the area of overtime and additional supplies and materials. Uh, we're keeping track of those. We're very grateful for the assistance of the FBI and DCI coming in and helping and of course the other agencies through mutual aid. Uh, I'm confident we'll be looking at uh, tapping our budgeted contingency in the, in the city budget. Our normal police budget's about $3.7 million annually. Overtime allowance, about $150,000. Uh, we expect those will be exceeded. We don't know to the extent yet. Obviously, the search and ongoing investigation are, are job one, but we're mindful of that and we're looking at options going forward because there will be expenses uh, significantly exceeding what is typical for us. So yeah. we're, we're taking a look at that, but recognizing as well, um, there's work to be done. Yeah. Um, so you don't have a hard number right now? We certainly don't have a hard yeah. number at this point. Now, in terms of with saying getting, uh, you know, you're getting assistance from, like you said, state agencies like DCI, other yeah. place, uh, you know, departments, 
and then federally, FBI, um, right. you know, it, is there, are they kind of alleviating some of that financial burden? Well, certainly the, the availability of the federal and state resources helps considerably, and we, we are paying for those with our federal and state tax dollars. And uh, to the extent uh, other local Wisconsin agencies are helping, we're very appreciative of that. And we'll, we'll see where our total costs run on this. Uh, we're, we're far from um, uh, ignoring the issue, trying to stay on top of it, but recognizing, uh, again, there, there's a child to be found, there's an investigation to be continued. Yeah, absolutely. Now, um, I would mention, you know, there is the opportunity for the community to make donations both to the ongoing search effort uh, and to the reward, and you can go online to the city's website to TWO-Rivers.org. There's a banner at the top on donating uh, to assist with the search for Elijah, and certainly would encourage folks to consider that. Yeah, how much has been raised right now? About? Uh, as of yesterday, a little over $5,000 had come in through online donations. Well, so I guess, can you just talk about what that means to you of, you know, this ongoing support well, to the community? Well, it's, it's certainly helpful, and I think it's indicative of uh, the, the community recognizing it's all in on this. So, and there and there've been many donations of food and uh, food and uh, and drink dropped off by members of the community, and I know there've been some checks walked in in addition to the online donations. Um, so, to my knowledge, you've been in your role for nearly three decades, right? 1995, yep. you were first. Yep. Yep. So, um, can you just get into what like this situation this, is? This is truly a unique situation, and while we, you know we we hope never to have to see the amount of policing resources gathered in one place that we are right now. Uh, I think every citizen should be very grateful that those resources exist and that there's the amount of cooperation and coordination among agencies that takes place. Not to mention the general public in the community, the folks that as we speak right now are out there scouring, you know, fields and swamps and forests all over Manitowoc County and elsewhere. So that's community and this is a this is a community response obviously with the the search and investigation headed up by law enforcement professionals, but this is indeed a community response to a tough, tough set of circumstances. Those tough circumstances in your time here with the city. Have unprecedented, you ever seen unprecedented. Sometimes you see this in the news and you say, there but for the grace of God goes our community. But uh, it's um, when, when a child is missing under circumstances like this, uh, I think it's uh, something we can all identify with, whether it's in our community or elsewhere.